let's do this one actually. Have you guys seen this? Where Brennan finally admits he can't attend shows. This is pretty interesting. Because I'm not going to lie, we've already known this. We knew this was the case, right? I'm sure most of you in the stream have heard me say that I have a feeling that if Brendan went to a live show, he'd get escorted out. I think if it was known that Brendan was in the arena, if he was in the venue, they would definitely escort him out. So now he's finally admitting he's not allowed to go to UFC events. I think he knows himself he's not allowed or his representative told him. But he definitely knows if he steps foot in that arena and and Dana finds out he's petty enough that he will get security to escort him out you know it you know it you know it here's Brennan admitting it was it worth it in hindsight now with antitrust lawsuit they settled in the contract now it says fighters cannot come after the UFC for fighter pay anymore the game is over there's nothing we can do there's no reason to bring it up was it worth it I would say no I can't attend UFC events, and I love the UFC. But you don't want to go anyway, right? I would go. Oh, it hurts yeah. my feelings. All right. Look at Chin believing the fucking lie that Brennan doesn't want to go. Chin, like, is Chin a... Do you think Chin's a re... I'm trying to think Chin's a redact. I think Chin's more redacted than Brendan. Chin makes Brendan look like fucking Nostradamus. No, Chin makes Brendan look like Elon Musk. Chin makes Brendan look like fucking Elon Musk. I swear to God. He must be absolutely R-worded. I thought you didn't want to go. Um, come on, Chin. Do you think he doesn't want to go to UFC events? Do you think he wants to sit down with you in fucking Thick Boy headquarters in that horrible, sweaty, piss-fragranced um, studio, you know, at on the Calabasas Fight Companion with inflated views, listening, watching the show on mute? Do you think he would rather do that or go in the fucking arena? Come on, man. He doesn't want to go to the event. Of course he wants to go. Of course he wants to go. He can't go though. He knows he can't go. If he goes, Dana's going to get him escorted out. <laughs> I'm like the, the nerdy kid at prom that, you know, didn't get a date. I'm like, I don't like the prom. <laughs> <laughs> I love the UFC. I bleed UFC. It's funny he says it's that. It's funny he says that, but then he always trashes them. He always fucking rags on Dana. But clearly, he, we know he does. We know he loves UFC, but then he doesn't really talk about them with any kind of love. That's why he's on the outside looking in. All I cover. One of the, issue, one of the reasons I left Showtime is because they wanted me to cover Bellator. I went, I can't. They go, we thought you liked MMA. No way. Is he lying? The retcon. He's now saying he left. Okay. I have a feeling he's playing into the lie because it's convenient. But also maybe his agents fucked him. Maybe his agents said you can that it's up to you to leave. But the reality is Showtime didn't want to renew his contract. Because it's pretty evident as soon as they hired Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell to do morning combat, they saw the difference in output. Even though by the time Brian Campbell and, and Luke Thomas got on Showtime, it was already towards the end of Showtime existing. But still, they got more return for their money out of those guys in the short time they were in showtime than they did out of brendan the clips were better the show was more you know well informed super entertaining great guests great interviews it was a good show morning combat's always been fucking good so i think personally showtime show saw time, showtime probably saw how much they were overpaying brendan for how little they were getting out of it like he would do these short shows it was basically below the belt low effort hardly any research just sitting on a chair doing podcast things at the beginning they tried to push him to do the whole like comedy you know variety show thing he couldn't read on fucking he couldn't read the fucking cue cards or the or the prompt or whatever so then he stopped and started doing the sit down podcast thing and just turned it into a podcast and it took all the fun out of it so most likely he got fired from showtime but now he's trying to spin it like he left and the reason why he left is because he loves the ufc so much I can't cover Bellator, even though Bellator is another MMA organization, a big one at the time as well. Like, what? how does that make any sense? Huh? What a lie. I go, I do, but only UFC. And so how, how can you love MMA, but only love the UFC? Is that possible? When there's so many, there's like fight, what's that thing called? There's fight, there's a fight is it fight cage? There's a few European ones. If you're into MMA, I think like I'm into football, you'd probably be into all of the organizations. You might not watch them all live, but you definitely keep up to date with like 
you know the big fights you definitely might see highlights and shit you definitely might follow some instagram accounts and shit to keep up to date with it if you're really into the mma if you're really into mma in general it's like boxing do you just watch fucking what boxing in america only you don't watch other boxing you know promotions in europe and shit or in the uk how does that make any sense when you're a former fighter too would you want to have your finger on a pulse of what's going on of some kid you know fighting in some other what was the place that what was a what was the thing that conor mcgregor was fighting in before he joined the ufc that sort of stuff right that does promote i don't know what the organization was called that he was fighting in i forgot but well, i don't even know the name but it's a strange thing to say to admit like you're into mma but you don't like anything else other than ufc hmm. and one championship the one championship thing is funny because he probably couldn't name you five one championship fighters off the top of his head guaranteed he probably could not name you or he probably couldn't correctly pronounce <laughs> let's say that he probably couldn't correctly pronounce five current one championship fighters i bet you i would bet all my fucking life savings and that he could not do that and i don't have any life savings <laughs> can't cover Bellator. can't didn't want to i have no passion for it you have no passion for the ufc either look how he drinks his can what a weird dude bro that's a weird way to drink a can in there seeing you at a ufc event would be almost as rare as seeing i don't know four shooting stars at once <laughs> dude <laughs> facts <laughs> what else you got wow man that's kind of sad but i'm not gonna lie it's kind of sad he can't attend a ufc event it's kind of sad but also it's a reflection on how shitty his Bernie, how shitty he's been post UFC career. He was always shitting. Remember when he first quit the UFC and he started to become a successful comedy? He be he kept shitting on the UFC, talking about how much more money he makes now doing comedy and podcasting. How he did nothing for him. He's the most successful fighter. He's the most successful. He's got the most successful post fight career of any UFC guy. Do you remember? He used to really let his nuts hang. He used to really act like he didn't need the UFC. Now the UFC is popping. He now wants to be back in the good graces. He now wants to be friends with Dana. Again, I don't like Dana White. I don't like how he operates and shit, but that guy is pretty consistent. If you're not with him, you're not with him forever. Very rarely do people get back on his good books. When he deems you to be an op, when you're an enemy, you're an enemy for life. <laughs> he hates current fighters, bro. He has a problem with Jules St. Pierre. Jules St. Pierre is one of the nicest guys ever, but he has issues with Jules St. Pierre because Jules St. Pierre quit at the height of his game <laughs> probably told brent told told dana one thing and then quit right like dana's a vindictive petty cunt who hardly forgives so the fact that brendan thought he could kind of get back in his good graces always fucking makes me laugh by just sucking him off on the show then when he didn't get a response he wanted he started arguing with him again so it's not gonna happen bro you exposed him for fucking ronda rousey you kind of you know maybe exposed him for other things as well he's not ever gonna forgive you for that never which again something that people don't talk about too often by the way like you know dana fucked ronda rousey that's fucking wild i wonder if joe rogan fucked her as well because he used to fucking love ronda rousey remember joe rogan used to say ronda rousey would beat up men and shit it's like what <laughs> joe rogan used to fucking love ronda rousey bro he used to fucking love her yeah exactly Josie choices do have consequences my dear that is so eloquently and so well put choices have consequences <laughs> exactly because I don't even disagree with Brendan ragging on Dana and the UFC I think he was right I think Brendan's war against the UFC he was fucking right he was right the fire pay thing is shit the way they treat their fighters is shit the fire pay thing for me is bizarre because I have a, f I don't know if I, if you guys disagree, but that whole 300 grand bonus thing he was given the other day, like, I think that is horrible to have these fighters literally competing for these bonuses. It's almost like they're competing for tips. It's like, why don't you just pay them a good base salary? You, you wouldn't need to pay like all these weird incentives. Like Dana probably loses that much money on one hand of fucking cards or something. It's quite disgusting. But apart from that, if you don't want to pay them a ba good base salary, let them fucking make money from sponsors on ships on their shorts. Then they don't even let them do that. He has fucking advertisements of Burt Kreischer's machine thing on the fucking Octagon, which Burt has nothing to do with the UFC, by the way, just selling advertisements on the fucking um, Octagon and shit. They don't get none of that money. If, if that's the case, let them just make money from sponsorship on their shorts and shit or their fight gear. What, what's, a, what's a big deal about that? 
but no, it looks ugly. It's just like, fuck off, man. Honestly, so greedy, like so greedy. Like I get it. If you can't pay, I get the argument that they have too many fighters on their roster. It's very competitive. They can't pay everybody great. Okay, cool. Reserve the money for the big dogs, but at minimum, let the fighters negotiate their own little sponsors that they can put on their shorts. Like how it was back in the day. They don't have to be all over the shorts. Maybe it's only five spots. Maybe there's only three spots you can have on your shorts. Maybe it's only one half of your leg or something. Do something, bro. Just to give them an, just so they can make up some money, but they don't. They shut that down as well like awful but yeah brendan can't go back to the ufc man it's over it's a wrap it's a wrap it's a wrap